hope you are able to view the screen and hope you are able to view me hope you are able to get my voice if yes please somebody can confirm me so that i can move forward hi good evening all of you am i audible to all of you hello can you please confirm am i audible you can confirm on the chat so that i will come to know whether i am audible or not hello can anybody confirm you can put in the chat box ah okay okay thank you rashid irfan and uh, uh, somebody from sacs thank you thank you for confirming that you know i am audible and i am uh, you are able to view me thank you so you know did uh, what happened no i need to take uh, the help of some other software to connect with the youtube so that you know you can able to see me and all the things so that is the reason i just want to confirm thank you thank you so much all of you uh, uh, you know uh, creative crafts uh, non gamer raju sayyar mr mahesh and all thank you so much so let us start our discussion today on pharma 4.0 and basically it is a need for the future pharmaceuticals the question is why it is a need for future pharmaceuticals there are so many reasons let me tell you one thing so many reasons and the one thing is very important with respect to the data integrity the point here is i just want to emphasize here is as we are speaking continuously since so many years you know about data integrity you may be aware that so many companies are getting the observations and all and further the new requirements are coming with respect to the regulatory expectations and all so we need to now move to the pharma 4.0 already some people started working on that if you see the scenario about uh, you know the uh, five to six years before and today many companies are going for automations many companies are trying to go for uh, software based solutions and all and now we need to move a step ahead and don't be under wrong impression okay whatever i am telling you it's a fact it's a fact i'll tell you one thing in india you may also aware about that that 10 years before nobody was aware about the digital payment and in just 10 years everybody is doing the digital payment now so the point is now the uh, business are increasing like anything so we need to be aligned with that so if you feel that this pharma 4.0 i am discussing today and uh, quite some guidelines are um, supporting them quite some groups are supporting them like isp and all since long still it may not be implemented or followed by many companies but that does not mean that it is the end of the uh, pharmaceutical business the point is not today but if you evaluate a pharmaceutical business after 5 years then definitely it will be on a different level with respect to the compliance with respect to the productivity with respect to the safety and everything the point is this pharma 4.0 plays very important role now in pharmaceutical so if you are not geared up with this if we didn't learn about this then it will be very tough to survive in the pharmaceuticals so this training is just to make you aware about how important it is and how it will be moved to implement in the pharma uh, implement in the pharmaceutical about the pharma 4.0 that we are going to discuss here and my request to all of you is you need to geared up with respect to the learning with respect to this uh automations and all because in future only this will be available you are already aware that chat gpt is also came into picture i am just giving examples you know so you will come to know that how the technology is upgrading so fast so that is the reason you need to be equipped with all the things 
so with this uh, brief uh, introduction i just want to move that what we are going to discuss today and uh, uh, there will be slight uh, you know delay for a couple of seconds when i am displaying the slide so what we are going to discuss today so this is the overview so after this uh, discussion uh, the couple of slides will be there about the um, trainer so uh, about me some information will be given quickly i will share that the point about the industry 4.0 and pharma 4.0 so how it is grown up up from 1 to 4 1.0 to 2.0 3.0 4.0 that we will discuss elements of pharma 4.0 with the collaboration with the isp so what are the elements of pharma 4.0 and how it is collaborated with isp you are already aware about the isp how it is linked with the pharma and all so how it is collaborated that we will discuss aspects are driving towards the pharma 4.0 what does 4.0 look like so what does exactly 4.0 will look like that we will discuss how it is the relation with the ich guideline so the point here is whatever the automations and all there how it is linked with the ich guideline and other guidelines that we will discuss holistic production control strategy so what should be the production control strategy as a holistic whole that also is the part of the today's training session the next is new technologies what are the new technologies which are driving the innovative manufacturing so what are the new technologies which are driving so normally manufacturing you all aware about that the drugs the, the manufacturing is by reactions the drug product there are different uh, formulations and all this is all you know we all are aware okay we all are aware about this the point here is i just want to discuss is what are the new technologies that can be adopted the next is technology transformation required for pharma 4.0 okay so we are discussing this 4.0 today of course management support will be there then only we can implement i also agree with that but other than management support what are what are the technology transformations are required that also we will discuss after that we will have some examples of uh, uh, you know the pharma 4.0 which are followed or used currently in many companies and uh, we can have a, a better understanding from some examples and then followed by question answer session so i suggest uh, there is a chat box in the same chat box where you are writing your comment like yes sir or good evening and all so you can write your questions during the discussion and uh, at the end i will go through all the questions and uh, read all the questions with your name and i will uh, uh, reply to your all questions okay so this is the brief about our uh, today's uh, training session <clears throat> and uh, if you anybody require the a copy of the training material at the end of the session i will share the link uh, through the same chat box so please be with me so let us start our today's discussion and uh, start with uh, uh, the uh, information about the trainer so my name is hitendra kumar shah i am a cjmp compliance consultant trainer and auditor from nadh plus gxp compliance services i will not put more focus on this but uh, the slide is visible to all of you you can go through afterwards also no problem uh, i independently handled the uh, qa and qc department and i faced so many regulatory audits including us fda ugmp and all currently i am a independent compliance consultant uh, supporting so many companies for uh, gmp remediations and all this is my work profile i started my career with uh, uh, sun pharma and then i moved to the different companies i work in a different companies in uh, different uh, areas like manufacturing quality assurance quality control even microbiology uh, auditing role i was having some auditing role and so on so this is the uh, these are the some companies where i work and uh, uh, before going ahead i just want to put this disclaimer that you know whatever i am sharing it is based on some collection of the information and uh, data so uh, this is only for the learning purpose okay so that is what the point i just want to put here as a part of our uh, disclaimer <coughs> because why i am putting this disclaimer because when i am conducting this live training to uh, all of you a copy will be 
uh, stored by the YouTube uh, in their, uh, uh, you know, the server. So this may be used by somebody else in future. So I just want to be clear for them that this is for their learning purpose only. Okay. That is the reason I put the disclaimer. Now let us start our today's actual training or actual discussion about the Pharma 4.0. So before going to the discussion on a Pharma 4.0, what is the industry 4.0? So there is a continuous upgradation from industry 1.0, then industry 2.0, then industry 3.0 and then industry 4.0. So the point is, what is the difference? How the industrialization is improved? So you will remember the information, you know, that uh, James Watt, when uh, he was uh, preparing the tea in the kettle, due to the uh, 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 energy of the steam, the kettle lid was moving and it was creating the noise. And that time James Watt come to know that there is a power in the steam. So based on with that thought, the James Watt with that thought, he considered the steam power for running the machine and that thought was tri triggered sorry that thought triggered for the industry 1.0 so basically when industry 1.0 was uh, uh, started so that time the thought was by using the machines and by running the machine with the steam power we can uh, do the maximum production so that was the thought behind the industry 1.0 then after that the electricity come into the picture and instead of generating the steam directly we started using electricity to run the machines and that change was the industry 2.0. I am making this topic in a very simple way. This is a very big topic and very broad topic to be very frank I am telling you. But I am making in a easy words easy language. Still, if you have any questions, you go on putting your questions. I will answer your all questions. I will try to answer your all questions. If I could not answer any question, I will uh, uh, tell you that I will reply you uh, maybe in a couple of days. Don't worry about that. Okay. So I will discuss with other experts and all and I will reply you. Don't worry about that. Then industry 2.0, you know, I told that it is a uh, use of the electricity for running the machines for the mass production. Then what happened? there was the industry 3.0 where we started using the computers we started using the computers or hmi to run the machines or plc's to run the machines so if you ask me now currently we are at the phase of industry 3.0 implementation uh, i mean uh, at the 3.0 and industry and in between industry 4.0 we are here now in between 3.0 to 4.0 we are today here so industry 4.0 is what? Industry 4.0 is use of internet as well as internet of things. Means we need not go at the workplace at all. Like see now currently in your company everywhere you are having the uh, uh, you are having the uh, machines and operated by PLC and SCADA. So you you give the command through PLC and all and the machine is running. This is the current scenario. But the future scenario will be that you need not go near the machine. You need not go near the HPLC. You can sit at home and you can, uh, uh, you know, process the chromatogram and you can take the print. Only you need to go in the laboratory for preparing the solutions and put in the system. So that is called uh, industry 4.0. Or to run the machine, you need not go to the machine level. You can sit here and you can run the machine. So this is the industry 4.0. Hope you understand. You are getting my point. And simply it is explained in this same slide and uh, in an easy way. So uh, I told you that there will be some uh, delay between when I am changing the slide and when it will be visible to you. Maybe some uh, five to uh, six seconds it will take. A, it is a delay. Okay. So you can see from this picture, you know, the industry 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0 and how, um, you know, it is evaluated. Okay. So that you can go through this slide. Same thing already I discussed. So I am not much of putting the efforts here. And here you can see the year, different year from industry 1.0, then 1.0. 
0 to 2.0 then 3.0 and then 4.0 so basically today we are at the place where we are in the uh, in the way to move to the 4.0 you will ask me that uh, which companies are following there are so many companies uh, i have seen even uh, to be very frank you know i am in auditing roles since so many years i have audited more than 500 sites so i saw so many companies now that they have so much of automation in one of the companies i will not quote the name but everything material addition then uh, it's a, a formulation company material addition mixing all the operations are automated all the ba the batch record is everything is a paperless the the data directly from the machine is captured in the uh, batch record and finally the batch record is stored or updated in the server approved also approval in process checks everything is stored in the system so this is the way you know the companies are now moving so if uh, you have any uh, clarity you need any clarity and all so i will uh, give the clarity but this is what the brief about this topic and uh, now let us move to the next so i was telling you about that there is a close collaboration between isp ISP is International Society for Pharmaceutical Engineering. So basically ISP is providing so much of guidance uh, for uh, qualifications with respect to the uh, pharmaceuticals and uh, utilities and uh, support systems in pharmaceuticals. So you can see from this picture, this is given by ISP. So basically there are two wings basically when we are considering about the relation with the ISP. Hope I am not so fast. My speaking is okay to all of you. If you need to speak slow, you can just put in the comment section. Otherwise, I will go with the same speed. Okay. So when we are discussing about the ISP and 4.0, there are basically two aspects. One is data integrity by design. Very important thing. Nowadays, many people are discussing about data integrity by design. So the point is whatever software you are using, whatever automation you are going to use for any operation, testing, storage, monitoring purpose, whatever you are going to use by design, it should comply to data integrity requirement. Now you will ask me why we are discussing this. The reason is there are many warning letters to the companies which already have implemented the available softwares uh, uh, in quality control laboratories. So in quality control chromatography softwares, there are three, four big players, you know, like uh, uh, Empower, Chromeleon, Lab Solution. I am not promoting any software here, but I am just giving an example. So you are also from pharma, pharma uh, company you your laboratory also may be using one of the software for chromatography correct still so many companies despite of using this software they are getting the observation with the data integrity because they lack the data integrity control by design so when they are implementing the software they are following the software just they follow the qualification or validation data they follow the protocol report they sign it and they implement it they don't evaluate data integrity by design aspect so that is the reason this is the first right arm about the collaboration of isp with the pharma 4.0 and the second is the digital maturity so when you are following or you are using the computerized system or digital solutions so at what maturity level that digital solution is provided at what level it is developed, at what level the controls are being put, at what level the qualification is uh, done and whether the system is compliant to the part 11 compliant, how it is evaluated. That are the two major wings of relation with the ISP. Hope you are getting my point. Okay. So when we are discussing about these two wings, there are basically the four aspects resources culture organization and process and information system so these four aspects plays very important role when you want to implement in your organization okay 
so hope it is quickly clear so i my focus was to make you aware about the purpose of pharma 4.0 and how isp is supporting isp already you know international society for pharmaceutical engineering okay so the point here is what i was telling you is a <coughs> we are using the uh, we are we need to put some more controls and all so what is the driving so why we need to go to pharma 4.0 we are happy here today we are happy why we uh, we need to go to pharma 4.0 and take a lot of headache and all this is the question many people may have right the reason is there is always continuously increasing complexity in the activities always increasing in the complexity means what let us take example you know if you ask me about the 10 15 years back everybody was discussing about only basic quality systems like the documentation good documentation deviations kappa trainings whether anybody was having the process of a training effectiveness no whether anybody was having effectiveness of a kappa no i am telling about the 15 years back story now it is very much important earlier there was not no human error investigations now we need to focus on human error investigations so the point is always there is a continuous complex uh, systems are coming up in the picture and lot of expectations by the regulators also like earlier there was no data integrity now uh, all the companies all the regulators are focusing on the data integrity earlier there were some observations which were considered as a non conformity related to the good documentation practices and now if you ask me this such a document such, such a same observations will be considered by the authorities as a data integrity so the point is there is a continuous expectations by the regulators and an increasing complexity in the processes and all and the second point is increasing push for continuous product monitoring the point is you know the earlier you know i'm just giving a thought that why it is required to go for pharma 4.0 huh? please understand please focus on me and again i am requesting you please be with me up to the end because i will be responding your all questions or queries and you will learn more from the questions okay that is what the thing see earlier what happened some in process samples were taken given to qc or some in process testing will be done at the in process laboratory so that was the thing but now the expectations are continuous product monitoring continuous product monitoring with respect to the quality safety efficacy purity and that is the reason the pharma 4.0 will play a very important role hope you are getting my point yeah so again one example that uh, there is a continuous expectations or more expectation by regulators no that i was discussing with you so uh, one example uh, i put here in the slide and the example is related to the continued process verification hope now slide is visible to all of you so the continuous process verification earlier what happened the uh, annual product quality review was prepared perfect annually the data was collect gathered and all and now the expectation is not annually but routinely or more frequently should be evaluated data of all the batches to ensure the intra and inter batch variability you are you are getting my point what i am asking you intra and inter batch variability uh, need to be evaluated and for that there should be more frequently review is required uh, rather than the annual review so this is an, again you know the uh, you know like that you know so, so many requirements are coming into picture so if you have suppose the uh, you know the computerized uh, batch record all the machines are automated and con uh, connected to the common computerized system then continuous process verification will be very easy you can just collect the data and you can your work is over and you can evaluate the data very easy but if it is a all manual as a traditional approach then 
it will be very tough you have to open all the batch records you have to open the all the analytical records you have to open all the qms and prepare the uh, continued process verification so this way it is a driving to the pharma 4.0 so basically the second paragraph is very very important if you can read it it is better pharma 4.0 technology allows for continuous real time monitoring of manufacturing process so any drift away from specified parameter can be predicted so any drift means not failing huh? drift means what any move variability variation any variation is there from the parameter can be predicted so for example suppose the ph you are getting suppose 4.5 and if you go and the next batch you are getting 4.7 then next batch 4.9 next batch 5.1 and suppose the ph of the limit is 5.5 then before filling the product it will have the predictive analysis and it will give the report that hey you need to focus on your formulation because formulation or the material because the ph is going on increasing continuously and tomorrow the batch may fail so here you are not waiting the batch to fail here you are not waiting for the problem to occur Be on the basis of data online it is evaluated and on the basis of online evaluation you will get the uh, predictive analysis that the product may fail in future so you need to focus today only you are getting my point what is the meaning of this hope you got my point you know so the point is here the predictive analysis it helps the predictive analysis so that it can uh, improve your uh, uh, work and the productivity many people will say that um, you know uh, uh, many people will say that no no but it will be very costly it is increasing the cost yes today it will increase the cost today it will increase the cost but it will save a lot of cost in future how i will give one example in one of the company i will not uh, quote the name of the company they were manufacturing the one batches for regulated market i always give the example of regulated market okay so validation was completed three batches over then initial one one uh, eight to ten batches are also over very good they cleared they pass they comply and the batches are released to the market very clear very simple but after that what happened suddenly one batch failed there was no any root cause why the batch is failed so the batch was kept separate they started investigating and the next batch was taken for manufacturing the next batch was passed after a couple of batches passing again one batch failed again they keep that batch separate or isolated and the next batch started manufacturing as they were not getting any root cause of failure they could not release the batch so they didn't release the batch but they go for go on manufacturing the next batches now here when the inspection was there every day inspection was there they found that such a failed batches about 60 more than 60 batches were kept under a hold for decision the FDA gave the warning letter observations and converted into warning letter that your process is not robust your manufacturing process is not robust and all the batches of the product which are released into the market were recalled now the point here is this is the traditional picture I am sharing you right now if you say if you think that what is the benefit of 4.0 with this type of scenario the point is in the traditional investigations traditional data evaluation you have the limited data which is recorded on the batch record so on the batch record the you have the limited data so you will not able to evaluate all the product data but if you have the pharma 4.0 implemented in your facility where this type of products are being manufactured all the batches data will be evaluated and will you will have the data analysis based on that you will come to know that what is the factor which is leading to the failure of the particular batch because they are continuously 
you know the data will be generated and all data will be evaluated at a time but here if you consider the traditional approach whatever the displayed that only it is getting recorded so there is again the so much of limitation in uh, um, you know the traditional uh, data and as traditional approach there is a less data the investigation is not up to the mark and as investigation is not up to the mark then automatically uh, you know you will not have the proper analysis of the data and which can lead to the uh, failing of the batches without any reason because you don't have the reason unless and until you have the data sufficient data you will not able to identify the root cause correct so this is what the benefit of the pharma 4.0 so it will have the predictive analysis second thing it will help you to proper investigate the possibility of the errors or the failure and you can take the action today so that this type of failures will not happen now the company is facing lot of problem where more than 60 batches are kept separately and uh, fda took lot of action on that company hope you are getting my point so today you are thinking that it may be the costly to put all these things automations and all but uh, maybe after two three years or four years it will be mandatory and then that time anyway you need to implement so you need to think at least you need to start thinking about this i suggest you can take up this matter with your uh, management so that at least the management can start thinking or you can put this point as a part of the your management review meeting so that at least the at least the thought process will be started in your organization okay so um, what does pharma 4.0 look like so uh, here uh, some information is given the pharmaceutical manufacturing plant set up according to pharma 4.0 principle made up of machine equipment and computers but rather than typical automated process control elements that they have standard since the late uh, 90s all the machines and equipment even individual components are fitted with multiple sensors that are constantly monitoring every aspect of the process and even their own wear and tear so this is what the point i am again emphasizing it is a predictive analysis pharma 4.0 offers a predictive analysis so now now what happened you have all the data okay like suppose if you have plc you if you connect the printer you get the all the data i agree with you but whether all data is evaluated there is no any solution to you at this moment there is no any automation at this moment what we are doing we are taking the print of plc attaching with the batch record or maybe attaching as a part of computerized system maybe uploaded in the system that's it but the data generated like for example drying suppose drying process let us say a simple example what was the drying pattern in the batch number one what is the drying pattern in batch number two what is the drying pattern in batch number three and so on the data will not be evaluated continuously each batch is considered separate nowadays but when you have a pharma 4.0 if you connect all the things all the instruments all the machines then the data will be analyzed evaluated and it will give the prediction that whether the equipment will get wear and tear or whether the equipment or process will have some adverse observations or whether the data is uh, going towards the failing results or going to the borderline results so that way the data predictive analysis will be done uh, uh, through this pharma 4.0 hope you are getting my point what i am explaining you so basically this pharma 4.0 as i am telling you it's a it gives a predictive analysis and it plays a very important role to protect our process or product from failing and also equipment damages future damages right <clears throat> now you can see that we are discussing this thing but how it will be helpful you know how it will be helpful for uh, savings in downtime that how the capability could deliver so the point what i displayed on the screen i think this slide is displayed yeah this slide is displayed so how it will be helpful for example now if you see now uh, with respect to like let us say the patient you know suppose any patient is having the some disease you know so all the data 
will be stored in the system by the doctors so that doctor will have the predictive analysis ki yes earlier the person i am i was giving a uh, for example a diabetic product so earlier i was a diabetic patient so earlier i was giving some only one one uh, 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 one tablet after 3 4 years the dose was increased after the next year the dose is increased so i think diabetes is not getting control so need to focus on some other aspects of the patient so that way it will help to predict to the doctor so same way in pharma also i give you example about the pharma that uh, how it will help uh, to protect uh, equipments and the machines from uh, possible future damages or it will predict the life of the specific spares or it will protect the product from failing or uh, even from going to the uh, um, going for a outward trend that will give the prediction even it will help to optimize the process so what happens sometimes you know there will be lot of variability in the uh, process each variability it is not possible to monitor continuously now but if you have the automations and all you have the solution with the pharma 4.0 you will able to optimize the process or optimize the all the operations so that variability can be reduced okay so this is what the thing i just want to share with this uh, picture hope you are getting my point if you have any questions uh, please again i am requesting put in the chat box i will reply to you now i was telling you that uh, uh, just 10 minutes before i was telling you that uh, there a uh, lot of data need to be generated so that we can evaluate the things and all if you go through the process validation guideline by fda it also says the same thing the definition of process validation is a collective collection and evaluation of the data so as much of data available you have to collect and evaluate it so one example is given here you will come to know that how much data we will get it by using the automation so there are you know tablet inspection machines so they inspect each tablet each tablet from all the sides they inspect the tablet from foreign matter foreign tablet black specs so many you know so many physical defects embossing debossing and all so many parameters are inspected in one tablet so just imagine that hope the slide is visible to all of you single online tablet inspection system generate huge volume of data because all these aspects for one tablet so if there there is suppose uh um, you know the 1 million batch size then just imagine up to 24 terabytes up to 24 terabytes that much of data is generated per year only by the uh, one tablet inspection machine and at the same time if we consider the united airlines united airlines generates 9 terabytes data a year so just imagine how much data will be generated so as we will have more data more, we will have more data to evaluate that is what the benefit or uh, you know novelty of this if we have more and more data we will have more and more information and we will able to evaluate properly so don't worry that 24 terabyte data will be evaluated automatically by the system you need not go through all each and every data so you will get all the statistics and all from the uh, product so that you will come to know that which type of physical defect is increasing from batch to batch and accordingly you can focus on the particular product so that way it will help okay of course now you already aware that artificial intelligence now there are lot of uh, the new wing in the engineering uh, it is started and to couple couple with that uh, uh, artificial intelligence now the chat gpt is already come into picture chat gpt is also playing a very big role in data evaluation and analysis because now the problem is we are only collecting the data like you take the example of process validation you take the process of, uh, uh, example of a product quality review you take the example of continuous process verification you take the example of cleaning validation whatever you take the example in current 
uh, current, uh, you know, pharma. The point is, we are only focusing on data collection. But we missing in the data evaluation. We put lot of efforts in data collection. We take all in-process data, finished product data, this data, that data and all. But we put very less time, very less effort to evaluate the data. And this artificial intelligence or chat GPT will help us to evaluate this data. That is the novelty of this. That is the benefit of this. You're getting my point. Hope you, you got my point, right? What I'm, I'm giving you, it is basically helping to collect as well as evaluate the data. So indirectly, this is what the expectation of a FDA, right? From the process validation guideline. So if you want to learn, you can just uh, ask me. I will share you the link for process validation. I conducted the, the training session on the process validation. So I will share the webinar link to you. So how basically Pharma 4.0 look like? Uh, before going ahead, I just want to request that uh, the training session may be extended by 10 to 12 minutes. So please be with me. I will not be that much of hurry, but please be with me because this is a uh, topic first time I think uh, uh, will be trained, uh, conducting training by me. So please be with me. A primary goal of Pharma 4.0 is making pharmaceutical production safer and more efficient along the whole value chain. Of course, but here the main point is cooperation. You need a cooperation. So digitalization of a process and system uh, requires the cooperation. So cooperation with all parts of supply chain. So it is not a, only one department or one case, you know, cooperation with all parts of the supply chain, academics or learning, industry associations, as well as exchanging the best practices with the players from the industries because the point is some automation it may be very good for some specific company or specific industry same may not be good or bad based for the other company so other company may have some different solutions so we can have the exchange of best practices from them to have the better ideas from a pharma 4.0 implementation right so let us discuss about shifting from industry 4.0 to pharma 4.0 okay so industry 4.0 to pharma 4.0 basically industry 4.0 is basically the broad terminology while the pharma 4.0 is implementing the automations which is used in the industry 4.0 for the pharma purpose which focuses on specifically the real time monitoring simulation and control of the manufacturing operation so when we are discussing about the industry 4.0 to pharma 4.0 our main focus should be the real time monitoring means continuous real time monitoring then simulation and control of the manufacturing process the goal is to enable processes of self adjust based on the data with the interconnected system throughout the operation. So the point here is if suppose some variability or some variations are going on automatically machine should set as per the requirement that is what the point here so that it is not required to the any operator or the supervisor to change any parameter machine should automatically change as per the requirements just like a automatic gear vehicle earlier there were the normal gear vehicle manual gear vehicle but as speed is increased the uh, the gear of the vehicle will automatically change correct this is the normal scenario who is driving now the uh, car you know you will come to know that the gears uh, you need not put the manual gearing and all same thing because what happened the gear it records the it analyzes the speed whether the speed is increased as per the speed the gear changes same way if any parameter is getting changes automatically machine will set accordingly automatically and the product will be of a same quality and of course this should be based on the 
two main important thing that is the product quality by design and uh, process analytical technology <coughs> sorry we are discussing this uh, pat since long guideline also there but uh, not much companies are implemented but now uh, slowly slowly now the companies are putting some controls not completely pat but so much of control they are putting and of course quality by design is again the requirement of a uh, ICH Q8 if you want to go through that you can go through it otherwise they I will share you the link I have already conducted the webinar on this <coughs> So basically, when we are discussing about the industry 4.0 moving from industry to pharma 4.0, we need to consider that it should meet the GMP regulations. Now, what does it mean? What does it mean? It means that it should comply to the basic GMP requirements, 21 CFR, then uh, CGMP requirement 21 CFR part 210, 211, the uh, local country requirement like uh, for India Schedule M, Schedule L1 and the other country requirements if you are going with the UGMP so UGMP requirements UGMP Annex 11 Neutral X and all so it should meet the GMP regulation that is a very important when we are considering the uh, shift from industry 4.0 to pharma 4.0 if it is not complying to this meeting GMP requirement then it is of no use very clear why this point I put it here because now so many companies are coming up for the automations so many companies and they own they claim that you know we are a part 11 compliant my dear friend you are only the manufacturer or developer of the software or automation and you are only claiming that is a part 11 compliant it is just like you know I am training you I am conducting the training and I am only telling telling you that I am a best trainer is it possible you will not believe on me right I am training you so somebody has to evaluate me as a trainer whether I am a trainer better trainer or not good trainer or not same way if you develop the software you develop the automation you don't have authority to evaluate whether it is a part 11 compliant or not it has to be evaluated independently by the other expert so of course uh, being a NADA plus GXP compliance services we support we support the software developers to uh, evaluate whether it is a part 11 compliant or not because basically it is not only with respect to that particular software or automation it is with respect to how it is in implemented in the GMP facility what type of desktop controls are there what type of uh, data migration data flow data storage so many things are there so that way it should meet the GMP regulation that is what I just want to tell you here. It is well understood in the pharmaceutical industry that companies must meet the stringent requirement of GMP through careful control of operations, testing and control of the software used to produce the critical medicines. Of course, it involves complex and futuristic combination of robotics, automation, embedded internet connected sensors integrated enterprise softwares of course this is a normal thing so I will not much discuss here now <clears throat> basically when we are discussing about a pharma 4.0 it will become reality or actually uh, you know on the basis of the implementation phase when we will have the necessary base platform means it will have some integrated tools devices where human or operators have the usability and awareness it should not be that much of complex simple to use correct machines and equipments should be fitted with that type of sensors which will able to collect the data continuously and the data you should have the software which, which can be evaluated with respect to specific expectations so that is what the required so that in case of any failure or prediction the predictive information or predictive failure information should be communicated to the uh, supervisor through different means or uh, through the pop-ups and all so this is the basics of you know the pharma 4.0 industry 4.0 to pharma 4.0 so now you will ask me the 
how it is related to the ICA guideline. So you know we discuss up to up till now we discuss about the ICH Q8, correct? Then uh, about quality by design, process analytic technology. Then we discuss about the process validation. So again, it is related to the GMP. We discuss about the Part 11 compliance and also again it is related to the GMP. And now it is relation to the ICH guideline also, like ICH Q10. The point is pharmaceutical quality system. If you go through this ICH Q10, there are a lot of points where we need to focus, which includes the life cycle approach, product life cycle approach, and uh, continuous improvements and all. So to comply these, we need to have the Pharma 4.0. So example, you know, uh, I'll tell you about the ICH, uh, uh, you know, Q10 pharmaceutical quality system is basically design, creation, execution of the shop floor production process so that it ensures the repeatable, robust and right first time, you know, right first time execution of the commercial production process. So based on that, if you want to comply this, you will require the automation very clear because everything you cannot record manually that is the point the parameter space must be adopted throughout the product life cycle already i told you that the life cycle approach is the expectation of ichq10 right design space again is the part of ichq8 design space requirement and submission based control strategy this is the control strategy submission based control strategy is the requirement of ichq8 okay if you want i will uh, share you don't worry about this okay hope i am not that much of uh, i am not with the speed but there are some slides are remaining holistic production control strategy hope slide is visible to all of you it requires it requires educated workforce to manage integrated process so the whatever the people who are going to use this system software computerized systems and all they should be the educated or trained on that data flow how data will be flowed from system to the uh, local server from local server to the main server how data will be analyzed that all is required modern platform machines or facilities support business processes with integrated GXP IT systems along with the supply chain. Yeah, the business processes also should support that. So if you have a lot of auto auto automations, but it is not integrated with the GXP systems, then it is of no use. For example, you are, uh, you know, the machines are having automations, but deviations are manual, then it is of no use. So you should have a system such a way that if during the manufacturing, if any parameter is going for out of train, it should give alert, it should give pop up. Automatically, the deviation or the incident or whatever notification should be initiated automatically. So, this way it should be connected. Nowadays, I told you that many companies have the uh, chromatographic system connected with the uh, part 11 compliant softwares. They claim as a part 11 compliant softwares, but still they get the observations because the problem is the second part like raising the os investigating the incident or laboratory errors is a manual if there is some error it, it is not directly prompting to the raising the incident or os and all due to that only the people are facing the lot of problem so there should be the integration that is the point i want to touch upon here it requires management to establish and foster an adequate framework and organization culture for pharma 4.0 that's it because without man uh, management support or organization support it is not possible so that is the reason i suggested so please speak with your management and uh, uh, you know go for uh, at least put in the management uh, meeting to discuss about this point okay so new technologies what are the new technologies of uh, manufacturing solutions hope everyone is with me so what are the new technologies so the first is continuous manufacturing this already you are aware about ICH Q13 so continuous manufacturing second is paperless manufacturing paperless manufacturing means everything is automation computer based additive manufacturing and 
3D printing. What is this? Just keep it for some time, separate. Next is big data and analytics. Big data and analytics means what? I give one example about the tablet inspection machine. So there will you will get a big data and it will analyze all the data so that you will come to know as a it will give the prediction and come to know that what type of uh, tablet defects are getting in, uh, generated more and more that you will come to know simulation so you can simulate the different product or manufacturing robotics yeah you can use the robotics where you are manufacturing a, a highly sensitive product highly toxic product or um, uh, sterile products you can use the robotics now the point is what is additive manufacturing and 3d printing many uh, companies now not much uh, touch with this uh, process of additive manufacturing and 3d printing but i will give one example suppose there is a you know uh, mixing is very critical in specific or uh, in the specific product so by using the additive manufacturing what you can put you can add the material in a very plain layer layer by layer one layer of the material second uniform layer of the material then third material on the uh, layer fourth material layer so all the layers uniformly will be added into the material that way you can use a additive manufacturing or 3d printing 3d printing means many companies they use the 3d technology to, pre, to prepare some uh, products like uh, uh, I'll tell you an example of a gloves surgical gloves so uh, you know uh, uh, the surgical gloves you uh, suppose specific size or specific requirement of the gloves is there so what happened you make the design and just do the command automatically how the printing is then you know when we are giving the print of word PDF or Excel we get the print from the printer same way when you give the command automatically the the actual that particular glow or actual that type of a material will be manufactured by using the 3d printing i have the example of 3d printing i will share the with the photograph how the 3d printing will work uh, to prepare the gloves that i will give the example of that okay and i will have the example or photograph of robotics also i will share you with you okay don't worry about that so these are basically the things you know where we can have the good uh, use for commercial things but for that you need a technology transformation yeah you re you need a technology transformation so what type of technology transformation is required it requires the technological distinctiveness that is how it will be distinct how it will be helpful second in plant transformation how it will be implemented in the plant not in the you know the uh, in the laboratory or in the you know the uh, software end or in the computer uh, equipment end but in the plant how it will be transformed or implemented network sophistication how the network will be provided because most of the company network is the issue so how sophisticatedly you provide the network and how systematically data will get flow from one location to another and of course manpower this you cannot forget or we cannot forget manpower plays very important role so manpower modernization and how it will be to educate the manpower to educate the people to train the people about this is very very important for the technology transformation so basically when we are discussing about technology transformation from the new technologies so uh, we will require the to have this means from new technologies to technology transformation is required right and now I just want to share some examples just a minute maybe 5 to 10 seconds so maybe required to you know have that single use concepts so the good example of a pharma 4.0 is the single use concepts like there are some uh, very costly and very small quantity of api and very toxic apis so it is very tough to wash clean the equipments and cannot be used for multiple pro facilities and all multiple products and all so you can make uh, disposable reactors or uh, in case of some vaccines you can use a, a disposable uh, uh, 
bioreactors or fermenters where you can use this single single use and you can destroy it so that way you can uh, take care of the product and molecule the second example benefit is online monitoring so you can have a continuous or uh, you know the online monitoring by using this uh, technology third is 3d printing so from this picture you can see here just a minute whether picture is visible to you or not so this 3d printing so you can see here the glove you can see these gloves and it is just getting printed so within just uh, you know uh, few minutes the glove will be ready this is basically uh, used nowadays by the uh, lot of uh, forensic experts so suppose they want to uh, check what type of hand the person will have or what type of face the person will have so they make a use based on the skull or available uh, body part they tr they can make the their uh, gloves or their, their uh, uh, hand what type of hands they will have so if they want to know they can make a use of a 3d printing and they can prepare the uh, this type of uh, gloves or the faces or the other parts so this type of specific uh, gloves or specific even the uh, shoes are prepared by using the 3d printing and nowadays it is more frequently used in the forensic sciences but nowadays in a pharma also people are working to use the 3d printing so you can uh, prepare the gloves you can just uh, prepare the gloves and you can wear and you can go in the area so need not purchase the gloves need not uh, you need not it is not required to take the uh, lot of a uh, gloves store in the, your uh, area facility and all not required you just do the print and within uh, uh, one minute the glow will be ready you just take it out wear it and start your activity so that is the benefit of a 3d printing nowadays even by using the 3d printing many uh, um, you know the companies they construct the houses also buildings also you know so this is the benefit of a 3d printing the robotics so you know as you know that the human is very very important and if it is aseptic i give one example of aseptic operations so human carries lot of microorganisms so when human is involved in aseptic manufacturing or sterility testing there is a possibility of a uh, contamination due to the human being so if you use a robotics for aseptic operations or uh, 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 simulate or uh, sterility testing and all then the this type of contamination chances you can reduce it uh, this is the example of a robotics where you can use uh, as a part of a you know the upgradation in the pharma 4.0 system right now before going to the next point you know i just want to touch upon that there is a youtube membership program and if you go to this link you know there will be gmp cgmp and advanced gmp okay three programs are there and there are different benefits of a GMP update, discount and all. You will directly pay to the YouTube and YouTube will use this money to, you know, uh, uh, you know, the guide me that what type of uh, trainings are more interested, uh, the people have accordingly, I will organize the training. So there are different uh, uh, categories of a YouTube membership program. Uh, it is displayed on the screen. You can just uh, go through that and you can make the benefit of this. Okay there will be a lot of uh, gmp updates i am putting a lot of gmp updates also in the youtube where from youtube you will get the notification about the gmp update and you, you will able to see the gmp updates continuously so there are three categories so you can go through this all the different have the you know benefits like uh, advanced gmp i can uh, person to person i can guide you uh, about any problem personally CGMP there will be the discounts on the different training programs and all and GMP there will be the uh, updates about the GMP of course GMP updates will be for all one two three categories but different different uh, benefits are there you can take the benefit of this okay this is what the things about me and finally I just want to request all of you to subscribe this YouTube channel if you have not subscribed so I request you to subscribe this YouTube channel second thing i request to share this 
to all the your pharma colleagues and uh, your management the benefit is you should be prepared with this that is the purpose of this so and everybody should aware about this so please uh, subscribe this youtube channel and uh, share this uh, link whatever link you use today same link you can share with your colleagues so that they also can benefit from the free tra free learning session and uh, if you are interested in any other topic that also you can suggest me i will take the training on that other topic so please like this video also because if you more and more people like this video then youtube will share this video to so many pharmaceutical people and they will get benefit of this uh, learning okay so now let us discuss about the questions and answer Mr. Anurag Gokhale, where we get personal trainings re uh, regarding Pharma 4.0? Yeah, Mr. Anurag, yes, uh, I can provide you the personal training about uh, Pharma 4.0, but you can just uh, 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 reframe exactly what you need. If you can uh, suggest me, I will provide the personal training also. And I told you that uh, if you, you have the uh, advanced GMP, CGMP and advanced GMP, then uh, of course I will support uh, person to person. Uh, Mr. Nihar Ranjan, uh, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Nihar. Mr. Pravin Singh is uh, asking, what is the roadmap for Pharma 4.0? Yeah, very, very good question, uh, Mr. Pravin Singh. See, basically, you know, the roadmap is very clear that how you need to go ahead with the Pharma 4.0. And the first step is involved in the management. And from there, all the computers, how you can connect and then how you can collect the data. And after that, how you can analyze the data and analysis with respect to what parameters you are interested. And whatever you are discussing this, you are considering these two points, you should not forget that is the digital maturity and the data integrity. So that way you can make a roadmap for Pharma 4.0. Because it depends from company to company. Now you your company may have already implemented the automation in the PLC and all, but other company even may not have the PLC or the other automation. So that way they need to have the uh, different roadmaps. But this is a general roadmap I shared you. Mr. Pravin Singh, uh, where are the components of Pharma 4.0? Okay, same thing I told you. Okay, Mr. Sayyad Tanvir, Pharma 4.0, how can be effective in QMS lead auditing? Oh yeah, see basically, you know, the uh, as I told you that it is a part of the pharmaceutical quality system and it will be effective in QMS or lead auditing. The reason, you know, I will tell you that as you will have more and more examples, you will categorize if you ask about the lead auditing. Okay, so based on the data, it will evaluate that which plant is having a more observation, which plant having a less observation, which plant is having a what type of critical observation, which observation uh, is similar in line with the uh, observation or citations raised by the regulatory inspections so this way it will have to analyze the things now if you have a sim one company having suppose 50 60 uh, vendor audits or supplier audits then it is manually to evaluate it is easy but if it is a multinational companies where you have a uh, multiple sites maybe maybe more than uh, 20 to 25 sites and each site is having a different suppliers and if you have a common auditing department or common audit global audit team, then it will help you to uh, have the effective QMS in lead auditing. Hope you understood Mr. Sayyad Tanvir, okay? Mr. Pularetti uh, is asking how PAT will be performed in pharma firm. So basically, it is very simple that if suppose the reaction is from A to B, B to C, C to D. So all the reactions are continuously monitored by the automated sensors. You can say a simple language sensors. So all the, all the parameters are continuously monitored and recorded through the sensors and collected in a common device. So that if there is any advanced, uh, so, suppose there is any some uh, adverse changes or any uh, you know, there will be some um, uh, drift to the or a change into the variability or drift into the result, it will give the pop up. So, that is the basic funda for the pad. But only problem is if it is a multi product facility, then it will be to implement it, it is quite uh, difficult. But if it is a uh, uh, one product manufacturing facility, then it is very easy to implement pad. 
Mr. Pularendi, please share a link about the uh, uh, PAT webinar if you will. Yeah, I don't have the PAT webinar, Mr. Pularendi, but yes, uh, I, I have a uh, webinar for uh, ICH Q8. Uh, so where I discuss about the quality by design and a um, uh, lot of different type of quality by design and uh, things. So I will share you the thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. I think. Uh, uh, hope everyone is okay with you with this training. And uh, do you need any uh, training material or a slide uh, slides of this? Please confirm me so that I will share the link. You can download the uh, training material from the link. But I suggest that you should not only uh, go through this, uh, just a minute, you should not only go through this uh, training slides, but you need to go through this recorded video. It is uh, available for some time in the YouTube. You can again go through the same link and you can, uh, uh, you can go through the, uh, this recorded webinar. This webinar is getting recorded by YouTube, but I don't know how much time it will be getting recorded, how much time it will be with the, YouTube so you take care of that so if you have any questions you can go through the recorded webinar immediately please share this to all of your colleagues you I have shared you the link from the link you can download now the link will expire uh, maybe in couple of days so you please download immediately in couple of days so that uh, you will not face any problem that's it from my side thank you thank you so much and ensure all time compliance thank you if you have any questions after this, you can put in the comment section, not in the chat section, because now the chat chat data will be removed by the YouTube. Chat data is only for short period. Okay, so if you have any question, you put in the comment section. Comment section will be continuous for long life, unless and until the video is with the uh, YouTube. Okay, thank you, thank you so much, and ensure all time compliance. Thank you so much.